yippee-yay, yippee-oh. Horses are the best by far. Yippee-yay, yippee-oh. So saddle up, boys, and saddle up well, and listen to the story that I have to tell. Yippee-yay, yippee-yay, yippee-oh. Good deal. I'm Bush. Yeah, me too. I never knew dancing could be such hard work. It's hot, too. Well, just think how good you'll be in the show. I hope so. Well, you sure made a lot of progress. All you need is a little more practice. Sure. Come on, let's get something to drink. Oh, uh, Darlene, can we get you something to drink? A uh, soda, maybe? Yeah, how about a lemonade? Well, gee, thanks. That's awfully sweet of you, but I've already had one. Come on, Ambitious. Let's go to the tap room and check the props for the snowman number. Sure. Sure, take a brush. Hey, take it easy with that paint half pint. We only got one can. Those two give me a pain. Hmm? What two? Spin and Marty. Spin and Marty? What do you mean? They're always trying to hog everything. I think they're big shots. Why, ambitious. How can you say such a thing? Spinner Marty are two of the nicest boys I know. And they're very sweet. And that's just it. When they've been buzzing around you, you think they were stuck on you or something. They make me sick. Why, ambitious. I believe you're jealous. And you're falling for their mush, too. They're only after you to let them play Robin Hood. Ambitious Carter of all the mean things to say. And it wouldn't give you the time of day if you weren't dishing out the parts. Everybody knows they're gone about Annette. Besides, I don't see why I can't play Robin Hood. So that's it, huh? What do they got that I haven't got? Look, Ambitious, will you do me a favor? Sure. Drop dead. Oh, gee whiz, Darlene. I didn't mean... Women. Now hold it a minute, Mooch, while I go get a brace. Get it before I throw it away! Oh boy, hot dogs and hamburgers! Which will you have, Master Mucci? I'll take one of each. Jolly good, with or without onion. Give me the works, perky old boy. Right, one hot dog and one hamburger coming up. With mustard, relish, tomatoes, pickles, mayonnaise, chili sauce, piccalilli, and a bit of raw onion. But you'll have to wait your turn. Yeah, I'm hungry. Well, you taste one of Perkins' specials. Hot dogs a la mode. <laughs> I'll get you one, Darlene. But you glom onto this bench. Uh, I'll get you a soda. Or would you rather have milk? Oh, I think a soda'd be fine. Okay. Can I get you a hot dog or something, Darlene? Well, gee, thanks, Ambitious. But Spin and Marty are taking care of me. But why don't you sit down and eat with us? Thanks, Darlene. You're not sore near anything, are you? Well, why should I be silly? Saying all those things about Spin and Marty. Oh, you didn't mean it. You were just upset. Anyway, you know, it's a big responsibility putting on a show like this. You're bound to get jumpy. Guess I'm just a heel. A couple of swell guys like Spin and Marty. <laughs> well, that's okay. Forget it, Ambitious. Go get yourself something to eat. There you are, Master Bucci. Thanks. 
Thanks, Perky, old boy. Thanks, Perk. Thank you. There you are. Here you go, darling. Thank you. Move over, Mooch. No, the other way. Thanks, pal. Hey, Annette, come on over here. Boy, all this rehearsing sure gives a guy an appetite. <laughs> You're not kidding. I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. You better not let dynamite hear you say that. <laughs> Thanks, Perk. Thank you, Perkins. Sure is fun putting on this show. Yeah, we're having a ball. Hope we don't end up in a fight. No. Toughen a guy's nerves, all right. Trying to get everything ready in time. I didn't mean that. It's Spin and Marty. Oh, not again. I hope not, but they're both dead set on playing Robin Hood. And Darlene's playing them one against the other. Oh, so that's it, huh? <laughs> Maybe I better have a talk with those characters. No, I think you'd be smarter to let them work it out by themselves. Right. I'd be a dope to get caught in the middle. You know, this should be a pretty number. A winter scene in the woods. Can I be a snowman? Well, gee, Moochie, we'll need a big snowman. Someone like Ambitious. You know, big and strong and fat. Hey, I'm not fat. Well, you will be by the time we finish stuffing you with pillows. Why can't you stuff me? Well, you'll be kept busy putting snow on Ambitious. Snow? Where are we going to get snow in July? We'll make it. Huh? Out of what? Out of cotton and soap flakes. Oh, like a Christmas tree. Mm-hmm. We're going to rehearse right after lunch. You know your number yet, Annette? I should. I've been practicing all week. Oh, sing it for us, Annette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, come on. Come on, we'll join in on the chorus. Well, I'll need music. I'll put the record on. Anybody want another hot dog? I do. You would. Well, I've only had two. I think I'll wait and get some ice cream. What a hap, hap, happy snowman. What a friendly, jolly type. How he loves to watch the children as he smokes his corn cob pipe. With his coal black eyes sparkling and his cheeks like cherries ripe. He's a hap, hap, happy snowman as he smokes his corn cob pipe. He doesn't mind the temperature when it falls to 10 below. For he's got his pipe to keep him warm And besides, he's made of snow He's an uncomplaining fellow Never known to groan or gripe He's a hap, hap, happy snowman As he smokes his corn cob Everybody sing! What a hap, hap, happy snowman What a friendly, jolly type How he loves to watch the children As he smokes his corn cob pipe with his coal black eyes a sparkling and his cheeks like cherries ripe. He's a hap, hap, happy snowman as he smokes his corn cob pipe. He doesn't mind the temperature when it falls to ten below. For he's got his pipe to keep him warm and besides he's made of snow. He's an uncomplaining fellow, never known to grow no great. He's a hap, hap, happy snowman, a hap, hap, happy snowman, a hap, hap, happy snowman as he smokes his corn cob pie. We better hurry up and get this wash on the line before the girls get here. Don't they have to do their own laundry? Sure, I guess so. It's a chip, making us do our own laundry. Oh, quit squawking, ambitious. It'll make a man out of you. Huh. Washing clothes is women's work. Hey, ambitious, hurry up. I got a whole raft of stuff to wash. Well, what do you want to change clothes so much for? I don't see why a fella has to be so clean. Hey, where's Spin and Marty? They went out of town with Bill. Yeah, they went to get some outfits and some groceries. Mr. Logan says that the show's getting us such appetites that we're eating them at home and having
now. We better get back here in time for rehearsals. Our Darlene will throw a fit. Oh, well, she's got a show to put on, don't forget. Don't worry, Ambitious, she will. She's a real slave driver. I wonder why Spin and Marty are so keen about being Robin Hood. Well, what makes you so sure they are? Because Spin asked me to find out from Darlene who's to play Robin Hood, and so did Marty. No kidding. Yeah. And when I told him that she hadn't made up her mind, both of them acted kind of funny. Oh, I promised I wouldn't tell. After all, it's a leading part. No, I think there's more to it than that, Joe. Well, like what, for instance? Well, Spin and Marty both like Annette, don't they? Sure, but what's that got to do with it? Look, Annette's gonna play Maid Marian. And in the play, Robin Hood smooches with her, stupid. Oh, so that's it, huh? Yeah, and maybe you'll get a chance to kiss her. Now, you understand that, Sam? You know where I come in? That's where you come in. That's right. Now, here are the groceries. Put in kitchen, please. Thank you. Uh, now, the calls will go. Let's try it, shall we? Tally ho! Tally ho! Tan to be, tan to be, tan to be, a hunting we will go. On our way to Nottingham, to Brittingham, to Buckingham, or Endingham, me hamlet by the sea. Oh no! Are we on our way to Devonshire, to Lancashire, or Worcestershire? We're, We're not, not so sure. sure. We'll have to wait and see. Oh, are we on our way to Dover, or going merry over the jolly old road that goes to Plymouth? Ho! routine with ambition. I don't have to sing in this, do I? Of course not, Phil. You're smoking a pipe. Oh, yeah, that's right. And don't forget, Ambitious, I want you to smoke that pipe all through the number. Okay, I won't forget. You come with me, Mochi. You aren't really gonna smoke, are you? Mm, sure, why not? Have you ever done it before? Nope. Darlene! Darlene! Here's the script you've been waiting for. It just came. Jim just brought it over from your camp. Oh, good, the Robin Hood script. And this must be the record. Now we can start casting it. The play's here, kids. My mom did it last year on Broadway, and it was a real sensation. We're not going to do the whole play, are we? Oh, no, just the duel scene, where Robin Hood and Sir Guy Gisborne fight over Maid Marian. That's you, isn't it, Nick? That's right, Richie, and I'm in love with Robin Hood. Yeah, lucky guy. Sure wish I could play Robin Hood. Well, I'll admit you two make a real cute couple. Well, sure, you'll be fine for the part of Robin Hood. Oh, that's just fine. I guess that lets me out, huh? Oh, no, Spin, you're gonna play Sir Guy of Gisborne. Gisborne? Who's he? Oh, you remember Sir Guy. He was a knight, and he was in love with Maid Marian, too. Only he was just a little older and... Oh, sure, I know. Old, fat, and revolting. Oh, yeah. He was the old stuffed shirt who tried to make her marry him because her old man owed him a bunch of money. Well, that's right, I remember. Well, that's why she ran away from her father's castle and went to Sherwood Forest. Well, to find Robin Hood so he could save her. Big hero, huh? Oh, yeah, that Robin Hood sure was a cool guy. 
big and brave and tall, dark and handsome. Oh, stop it, you two. What are you trying to do, wreck everything? Look at Spin. Sir Guy wasn't really so old. And he was just as brave and just as strong as Robin Hood. Yeah, and meaner than a skunk, too. Don't pay a bit of attention to them. They don't know what they're talking about. Well, anybody knows the heavy is the best acting part in any play. Oh, yeah? Sure it is, Spin. What do you know about acting? Well, as much as you do, I guess. Oh, is that so? Yeah, and a lot more, maybe. Well, if you're so smart, why don't you play this character, Gisborne? Oh, that's what you'd like me to do, isn't it? Oh, no, you don't. I'm playing Robin Hood or nothing. You'd make a good nothing. Now, wait a minute, wise guy. Stop it, you two. Oh, you're just sour grapes. You always were a sore head. Oh, and I suppose you're not, huh? Oh, that's a laugh. I'm not, and you know it. Do I? What about dynamite? You weren't sore when you found out he liked me better than he did you, were you? Oh, no, not much, you weren't. You had no business going behind my back in the first place. You practically blew a gasket. Ben, Marty, what's the matter with you two? Have you forgotten why we're putting on this show? Well, it's his fault. He's always trying to run everything. So are you. Oh, please stop acting like babies. Behave yourselves. We've got a lot of work to do if we want to get this show ready in time. You do want to raise the money, don't you? Okay, forget it. This is a fine start for our show. Well, it's your own fault. You could let me play Robin Hood. Do you ever feel mean, Dynamite? Real mean and crotchety? <laughs> Yeah, I guess you have. You used to be about as cussed as they come. And you know how I feel. Mean and ornery and mad. Mad at everybody, including myself. Ben? Gee, I'm sorry. I know how you feel. I know how much you wanted to play Robin Hood. Darling really had no business giving it to Marty any more than you. But you did it on an impulse. And after all, you can't both play it. That's okay, Annette. Forget it. After all, it's not as though Sir Guy's part wasn't any good. I said forget it. You're gonna do it for us, aren't you, Spin? Please, for me. Okay. If you want me to. Thanks. I knew you wouldn't let us down. Let's go someplace where it's quiet and study the script. You want something, Marty? Well, I was just figuring on running for my lines, and I thought maybe you'd like to help me, but I see you're busy. Well, Spin and I were just going to go over our lines together. Well, don't let me interfere. See you. Come on. Hey, why don't you look where you're going? Why don't you go where you're looking? Now look where you're Oh, you and your rabbits. Darn that Marty anyway. Knocking a guy over, making him spill those poor little rabbits' food. Hey, Mochi, Mochi. Come on and help get those programs out. All right, but let me feed that mic first. Well, make it snappy. We haven't got all day. Okay. Joe, you'll have to pad yourself. After all, Friar Tuck was a little on... I'll see. He was a real fat so. Well, he wasn't exactly skinny. But I think you three look okay. After all, the merry men wouldn't have been too fat, you know, the way they were riding and hunting through the woods every day. You know your song? Pretty good, I think. Yeah. Well, let's try it, okay? Okay, Say, Speck, you want to put on the hunting song? Okay, darling. Okay, Joe, you wait over there. Come, hey, diddly-o. Brave Robin Hood will be the mate. Come, hey, diddly-o. 
if you bring her here to the forest glade, come hey diddly yo. Then they'll be wed by fire tuck, he'll bless them with St. Martin's luck. And my love gives one for the last must eat his fill of coal. Tum hey diddly, tum hey diddly, tum hey diddly yo. Good night, good night. It's time to hang your saddle up. We'll soon be bedding down to rest. Good night, good night. We put the sleepy cattle up. The yellow moon is hanging in the west. Let's go and throw a lasso on a dream. Good night, sleepy cowpost. Good night. So saddle up, boys, and saddle up well, and listen to the story that I have to tell. Yippee-yay, yippee-yay, yippee-yo. We hunt the boar, the wily boar, sing tum hey diddly yo. Through the woods we go with our trusty bow, sing tum hey diddly yo. Tonight we'll have a juicy roast, and that brown ale we'll drink a toast. And on the morrow, up be times a hunt. Sing tum hey diddly, tum hey diddly, tum hey diddly oh. Brave Robin Hood will free the maid, tum hey diddly oh. He'll bring her here to the forest glade, tum hey diddly oh. Then they'll be wed by fire tuck, he'll bless them with St. Martin's luck. And my love gives one for the last must eat his fill of coal. Tum hey diddly, tum hey diddly, tum hey diddly oh. It looks real good, kids, but let's try it again and put a little more life into it, okay? Okay. Right. I love thee, sweet maid Mary. But I love thee not, Sir Guy. Thou couldst learn. Nay, thou knowest that I love Robin Hood. Robin Hood. Bah! That's better, Spin, much better. Thanks, Annette. Quite a character, that Sir Guy. He was at that. So was Robin Hood, Lady Marion, too. Those two were in love, I guess. Who? Robin Hood and Maid Marian. Uh-huh. It's kind of a funny deal, isn't it? What? Oh, you know, falling in love and getting married and things like that. I think it's sort of nice. Yeah, I guess it is at that. How old are you, Annette? Sixteen. Girls get all the breaks. In what way? Well, when a, when a girl's 16, she can get married if she wants to. But a guy has to wait until he's 21 or so. Some boys get married when they're only 19. Oh, yeah, if they're going into the service or something. But a guy really shouldn't get married until he's got a job. Or at least knows what he's going to do. I mean, what kind of career he's going to pick or what kind of business. That's what I think, Spin. He should at least be, well, sort of started out in life so he can support a girl before he gets married. My folks feel that way, too. It helps out, I guess. Kind of expensive getting married. Uh, well, shall we get on with the play? I guess we'd better. Be 
don't care. All right, Mr. Snowman, put up your tools. Put them up. 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 Hey, Mochi, wake up. Mochi. Go ahead and shoot. I didn't burn up your dumb old jalopy. Come on, Mooch. Wake up. Come on. Huh? What's the matter? You had a nightmare, fella. Oh. We're going back to sleep now. You're okay. Hey, what's going on around here? Oh, Moochie had a nightmare. Serves him right after eating six hot dogs. For Pete's sake, how can anybody get any sleep around here with all this yakking going on? Like a shot. Help! Help! It's Moochie! Help! Help! You all right, Half Pint? Sure, but the rabbits! Oh, no. Don't tell me they've had another litter. No, look! Well, I'll be a blue-nosed gopher. Hey, they're gone. Every last one of them. Somebody left the door open. They ran away. Hey, there's one of them. Hey, what the dickens is going on around here? Moochie's rabbits, they ran away. Somebody left the door open and we're helping him catch them. Oh, they picked a fine time, three o'clock in the morning. I say, what's going on? Well, Moochie's rabbits got out. Oh, dear. Nice little bunny. Come on, bunny. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Come on, bunny. Nice little bunny. Come on, bunny. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Come on, bunny. Nice little bunny. Come on, bunny. Nice little bunny. Come on, bunny.
Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, I guess that's it. Ten, but there should be twenty of them. Well, I'm sorry, Mooch. I guess the rest of them have taken to the range by now. The range? We better hurry up and go get them. Hey, no, you don't, young fella. You're not going anywhere. You're marching straight back to bed. We've had about enough excitement around here for one night. But they'll starve to death and die. Now, now, Moochie, don't get excited. There's plenty of grass and stuff out there in the range for them to eat. There is? Why, sure. And before you know it, they'll be moving in with their country cousins. Who's their country cousins? Oh, you know, all the little wild rabbits like the cottontails and the jackrabbits. Will they take good care of them? Don't worry, Junior. They'll take care of themselves. Now, you get on back to bed pronto. Are you sure? I'm sure. Okay. be the death of me yet. Here you are, sir. Thanks, Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with you? Oh, 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 oh. Now, how do you suppose that ever happened, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little rusty. You don't look rusty to me. Where'd you learn? Went to fencing school this last winter. Good deal. Think maybe I'll take up fencing this winter. Me too. Well, it's wonderful exercise. Strengthens your leg muscles and gives you a good posture. <laughs> Looks like a lot of work to me. It's lots of fun once you get onto it. Hey, Spin, where are you going? Out. Well, don't you think you better practice for the duel? Don't worry about me. I'll be okay. I hope. I said I'll be okay. Well, maybe you can get Annette to help you. Any objections? Hey, you two, cut it out. The mail's here. The mail's here. Thank you, the money for the ticket. I think you're right, Halfline. Here's one for you. Here's two for you, Speckle. Two for Ambitious. A couple for you, Marty. Spins. Mm -hmm. And three for me. Wow. Mom bought four tickets. Good. Dad bought four, and Aunt Mary six. Good old Aunt Mary. She always comes through. Graham bought six, and Jason four. That was sure nice of him. Is your grandmother going to come up for the show, Marty? No, she can't. Says that that swimming meet last year was enough to last her for the rest of the atomic age. Yeah, it was quite some clam bake, all right. Look, Dad bought four. I'll take this money over to Mr. Logan's office, and I'll ask him if he'll put it in the safe for us. Good idea, Mooch. Girls here yet? Nope, Darlene just called up, said they'd be a few minutes late. They gotta try on their costumes. Hey, that reminds me. I gotta get a hold of Perkins. Well, she wants to uh, rehearse his uh, Ham Boleyn number, the first thing. <laughs> Give this money to Mr. Logan. Mr. Logan, Mr. Logan. The money's here. Money? What money? For the show. It started rolling in. At this rate, we'll be able to pay for the stove and money's all busted up jalopy. Well, I must say, I've got to hand it to you boys. Here, will you put this in the safe for us? i got to go catch mine. Oh, Moochie. Yeah? Don't you think we'd better count this before we put it in the safe? Oh, you can if you want to, but we trust you. Well, thanks. Don't mention it. Uh -huh. Is it okay? Well, it looks all right to me. Good. Joe, would you try the curtains? Okay, Ambitious, get rid of the ladder. Say, Perkins, are you ready with your Anne Boleyn number? Yes. Although, I, I must confess, I'm in a bit of a dither. Oh, Perkins, an old pro like you, don't tell me you're nervous. Well, I, I must admit, I'm rather glad it's only a rehearsal. Well, you won't fail us. Do you need any props? No, only poor dear Annie's head, which I tuck under my arm. <laughs> well, you're on your own, Perkins. Say, would you put on Perkins the Ghost of Anne Boleyn number? Right. Lodges lie 
life. The ghost of Anne Boleyn walks, they declare. Now Anne Boleyn was once King Henry's wife. Until he made the Edsman bobber heir. Ah, yes, he did her wrong long years ago. Now she comes back at night to tell him so. With her head tucked underneath her arm, she walks the bloody tower. With her head tucked underneath her arm at the midnight hour. Along the drafty corridors for miles and miles she goes. She often catches cold, poor thing, it's cold there when it blows. And it's awfully awkward for a queen to have to blow her nose with the red duct underneath her arm. Sometimes gay King Henry gives a spread for all his pals and gals a ghostly crew. The edgeman carves the joint and cuts the bread. Then in comes Anne Boleyn to queer the do. She holds her head up with a wild war hoop. Whoopee! And Henry cries, don't drop it in the soup. With her head tucked underneath her arm, she walks the bloody tower. With her head tucked underneath her arm at the midnight hour. She looks forlorn and sad like with a look I can't express. But that's to be expected in a case like hers, I guess. For a girl can't keep her chin up. If she's in a bloody mess with the red tucked underneath her arm. Yeah, so great, Let's Let's good, good, Jerry, in. You're gonna open the show. Oh, thank you, Miss Dolly. That will be jolly. I say, I'm just going to tell Sam. <laughs> Don't drag with the other leg. Watch your own legs, Robin Hood. Ben, take it easy. And you better keep your left hand up if you don't want to lose your balance. Listen, who's doing this, you or me? Well, you're just learning, aren't you? And I suppose you know all about it, huh? At least I've had a few lessons. Big man. Moochie, what are you trying to do? Break my neck? Sorry. Let's try it again, huh? Spin's gonna need a lot more practice. And don't worry. Darlene will whip me into shape before the opening night. She's wonderful, isn't she? Ambitious seems to think so. Poor guy, he's sunk. Sunk? He's unconscious. You got the program finished yet? Well, that's what I wanted to tell you about. Everything's ready. Oh, good. What do you want me to do with them? Oh, gee, ambitious, I don't know. Wait a minute, let's put them out on the table near the entrance and sell them for 10 cents a copy. Hey, good deal. Well, I'll get to work on it right away. Yeah. Finn, keep your left hand out of the way. I got him! I got him! Hey, Finn, how much can 
times do I have to tell you to take it easy with that sword? Darlene wants it to look real, doesn't she? Yeah, but do you have to overdo it? What's the matter, big chuck? Can't you take it? Oh, come on, Spin. You're acting like a 12-year-old. Me acting like a 12-year-old? <laughs> That's a laugh. Look, just because Darlene gave me the part of Robin Hood instead of you, can I help that? You practically hit her on the head. Now, wait a minute. Oh, dry up. Good night, good night. It's time to hang your saddle up. We'll soon be bedding down to rest. Good night, good night. We put the sleepy cattle up. The yellow moon is hanging in the west. Let's go and throw a lasso on a dream. Good night, sleepy cowpost. Good night. Way out there on the triple R. Yippee a, yippee o. Horses are the best by far. Yippee a, yippee. So saddle up, boys, and saddle up well, and listen to the story that I have to tell. yippee yay, yippee yay, yippee yo. Sorry. Hey, Joe, up in with my boot, I can't get it off. <laughs> What's the matter, Half Point? You getting nervous? Maybe you're not, but I am. I'm scared stiff, and I'm getting scared her every minute. You and me both ambitious. Aw, uh, you just got stage fright. Yeah, well, just the same. I'll be glad when this dress rehearsal's over with. You wait till the show goes on. You'll break out in a rash. Well, I hope I remember my lines. What lines? Well... <laughs> Here's those bills I checked for you, Jim. They're okay. Oh, thanks, Bill. How's rehearsals going? I was just down to the barn. Things are a little hectic, but I think everything's under control. Well, it won't be long now, huh? No, just two more days. They're just about ready to get underway with dress rehearsal, and that's it till the big event. Well, I hope we all get through it alive. It's been quite a hassle, all right. Might have been easier if we just paid for Marty's car and bought a new stove and let it go at that, huh? Think of all the fun we'd have missed. Yes, from uh, what I've seen of the show, they're coming up with a pretty good one. If hard work means anything, it should be a hit. We gotta hand it to those kids. That Darlene's quite a little director. She's given it a real professional touch. Ship off the old block, huh? By the way, she wants you to come to dress rehearsal. Wild horses couldn't keep me away. Let's get on down there. Well, hi, Mr. Logan, Mr. Burnett. You're just in time to see the snowman number. Well, good. We're anxious to see what a nice job you've done. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll get it started. Say, Joe, you ready with the dimmer in the spot? You know your cue. Okay, Darlene.
with his coal black eyes a sparkling and his cheeks like cherries ripe. He's a hap, hap, happy snowman as he smokes his corn cob pipe. He doesn't mind the temperature when it falls to ten below. For he's got his pipe to keep him warm, and besides, he's made of snow. He's an uncomplaining fellow, never known to groan or gripe. He's a hap, hap, happy snowman as he smokes his corn cob pipe. What a hap, hap, happy snowman! What a friendly, jolly type! How he loves to. With his coal black eyes a sparkling and his cheeks like cherries ripe. He's a hap, hap, happy snowman as he smokes his corn cob pipe. He doesn't mind the temperature when it falls to ten below. For he's got his pipe to keep him warm and besides he's made of snow. He's an uncomplaining fellow, never known to groan or grunt. He's a hap, hap, happy snowman as he smokes his corn cob pipe. while we were dancing, and then he just went out like a light. Oh, I think he's gonna be all right. He just fainted. Oh. He's starting to come around now. I better call Doc Spaulding. I don't think that's gonna be necessary. He looks pretty sick to me. He's gonna be sick all right, but I don't think it's serious. There's the water, Annette. Oh, thanks, Mooch. Yes. Feeling better, Ambitious? Yeah, I guess so. Gosh, Darlene, what'd you have to make me smoke that darn old corn cob pipe for? Rehearsal over? Half of it. They're gonna wind it up tomorrow. You feeling better? Oh, sure, I'm all right. That was quite a winding you pulled. Yeah, you almost flipped your lip. Oh, I was just a little tuckered out from all that rehearsing, that's all. Rehearsing my eye. You and corncob pipes just don't go together, that's all. Darlene had no business making me smoke that old pipe. You can't blame her for wanting the show to be good. Yeah, it ain't her fault that you're a sissy. Was it my fault I got a weak stomach? Well, you sure turned green. All I can say is you better not ever smoke a pipe again. Yeah, Dad says you aren't supposed to smoke until you're 21. And it wouldn't hurt if you waited until you're 41. Well, you can tell him from me that I'm not going to start till I'm 101. <laughs> Thank you. 
you trying to do? Pull a spin and Marty on us? <laughs> Come on now, cut it out. Things are bad enough around here with those two young sprouts always flying at each other's throats without you jugheads acting up. You heard me now, simmer down! <laughs> did a good job for a guy who was dying a few hours ago. Well, lay off, will you? Can't a guy's stomach do a couple of nip-ups without you guys making a big thing out of it? You gonna go in for dessert, too? Why not? What's on the menu? I know. Devil's food cake, chocolate ice cream, and chocolate sauce. Sam told me. Wow, what a combination for a weak stomach. I'm gonna have second helping. Mom says nothing will hurt me because I got a cast iron stomach. <laughs> You're a man after my own heart, Junior. Here you go, gang, with Sam's compliments. Devil's food cake, chocolate ice cream, chocolate sauce, and topped with whipped cream yet. Whipped cream chocolate sauce. Mmm, boy. I wonder how old my dad was when he started smoking. You have to talk about smoking. Oh, I forgot. Thanks, Ben. It's good. We'd better get the boys to bed a little early tonight. They got a big day ahead of them. Yeah, they're only halfway through dress rehearsal. How about a campfire song? Get their mind off the show for a little while. Good idea. They could use a little relaxation. I could stand a little relaxing myself. Boys, we got an awful lot of work to do. Say, Ambitious, did you tell Spin and Marty we're waiting for him? We sure did. We ought to be here any... Well, here they are now. You sure look keen. Yeah, Marty, you look pretty sharp. You look like the picture of my dad when he was in college. Gee, you boys really look smart. Thanks, Annette. Yeah, thanks. You ready with your number? Gosh, I sure hope so, Darlene. Well, don't be nervous. And whatever you do, don't forget the punchline. Go on, get up there. Say, Joe, would you put the spot on for me? And, Speck, you put on the music. Either. I say, old boy, did you see a hare run by here? A what, sir? The hare. They're not hares, they're rabbits. A hare? That's what I said, a hare. You mean one of those creatures with the long ears? Right, oh. 
that goes hoppity hop hop hop. Righto. And has a short tail. Righto. Then I didn't see one. <laughs> oh boy, you really scraped the barrel for that one. You should do so good. Doctor, I've contracted a terrible habit. And what may I ask is that, sir? Well, you see, I talk to myself wherever I am. In the subway, in my office, even in the bath. Tell me, doctor, can you do anything for me? Oh, I think I can, but I must warn you. The treatment takes a long time. It's very slow, painful, and what's more, very expensive. Tell me, suppose you do talk to yourself. Is that really so terrible? Oh, I suppose not. But I'm such a bore. <laughs> I like to learn about the ears. I mean rabbits. Thanks, Annette. You too, Marty. Thanks. Well, you were great, real great, both of you. But you better get over to the bunkhouse and change your Robin Hood outfits. You know, we haven't got too much time. Oh, is the Robin Hoods get next? Mm-hmm, right after my number. Well, give us three minutes to change. I'll give you five. I've got to change two, you know. Five minutes? Feature that. Takes Mom two hours. <laughs> This is the story of Slew Foot Sue, a real tall gal about 80 foot two. She was a beauty, sure enough, but though good looking, she was plenty tough. Cactus breeches she did wear, with a brand in iron, she'd curl her hair. She'd ride a whale through the ocean's road. She picked her teeth with a telegraph pole. Slew Foot, Slew Foot, Slew Foot Sue, a ring-tailed female buckaroo. Rattlesnakes ran and wildcats too, keeping away from Slewfoot Sue, Slewfoot Sue, Buckaroo, 80 foot two, Slewfoot Sue. She never had a bow until she ran into old Pecos Bill. Stopped to pass the time of day. They liked each other right away. Brought her a field of violets, a boxcar full of chocolates. On the Rockies, they sat side by side and held hands over the great divide. Slewfoot, 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 Sue. A ring-tailed female buckaroo. Rattlesnakes ran and wildcats too. Keeping away from Slewfoot, Sue. Slewfoot, Sue. Buckaroo. Eighty-foot two. Slewfoot, Sue. A palm to the palm to the palm to the palm. The day that she became a bride, Slewfoot thought she'd take a ride. Jumped on a horse that belonged to Bill and lit right over the top of the hill. Then that horse, he started to buck. Buck so high she had to duck to keep from hitting her head on the moon. She didn't come down till the next day noon. Slewfoot, 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 slew. A ring-tailed female buckaroo. Rattlesnakes ran and wildcats too. Keeping away from Slewfoot Sue, Slewfoot Sue, Buckaroo, 80 foot two, Slewfoot Sue, Slewfoot Sue, Slewfoot Sue, Slewfoot Sue. All right, boys, what do you say we have one more song and then hit the sack and get a good night's sleep, hmm? Pick the one you want, Bill. Good night, good night. It's time to hang your saddle up. We'll soon be bedding down to rest. Good night, good night. We put the sleepy cattle up, the yellow moon is hanging in the west. The campfire slowly dying, the embers burning low. 
a lonely coyote crying in the valley down below. Let's go and throw a last one a dream. Good night, sleepy coyote.